What is mercury? It's a metal. It's a pollutant. Mercury is toxic. Mercury is a toxic metal. It occurs naturally in the ground and in the atmosphere, but it also gets put into the atmosphere by things like burning fossil fuels. When mercury gets into the atmosphere, the wind carries it everywhere. Anywhere you are in the world, there is mercury, in the environment, in plants and animals, in people. Most of the mercury that gets carried by the wind is not necessarily toxic, and something in some environments makes mercury turn from a not-so-toxic chemical into methyl mercury, which is toxic. Once it's out in its toxic form, it goes into fish, birds, frogs, everything. But this transformation does not happen everywhere, and we need to know where it is happening. We need to collect samples. We need something that we can collect that will reflect the amount of methyl mercury in the environment, something that is the same in every environment. We need something for a sample that is the same even in places where the trees are different, the fish are different, and the birds are different. This is a dragonfly, and this is a dragonfly larva. We think dragonfly larva can act as our sample. Why dragonfly larva? We asked Dr. Sarah Nelson at the University of Maine. Uh, we think that they might make good biosentinels because they're ubiquitous. So our project is sampling dragonfly larvae in national parks from here in Maine to Florida to Alaska to the desert southwest. And we find dragonfly larvae in all of these regions. Um, and we even find them in places like fishless ponds, small wetlands, some vernal pools. So in places where we can't capture fish as sampling organisms for mercury. They're a key part of aquatic food webs. Um, they live in the water for anywhere from a year or even less than a year to five years or more as larvae before they crack out of their exoskeleton, which is called an exuvia, and fly away. Um, so they're spending a long time in the water where a lot of the methylation process can occur that gets mercury entrained in food webs. Um, they're predators, so they eat other animals, and they're eaten by lots of other animals, including fish, other macroinvertebrates, even birds eat dragonfly larvae. To make sure that dragonfly larvae will work as a sample from anywhere, we need to test the idea. So, we need dragonfly larvae from many different places. We can then compare the amount of mercury in the larvae and see if they are giving us the information to then ask, what is it about these different environments it is changing mercury into methylmercury, or not. It's a lot of work collecting larvae from different environments. That's why the National Park Service, the U.S. Geological Survey, University of Maine, and other partners are working with citizen scientists to collect dragonflies from parks across the country to help test the idea of using dragonfly larvae as mercury detectors. If doing this will help us better understand mercury in the environment, it's all worth it. What can you do? Learn where your electricity comes from. Sometimes the biggest source of mercury pollution is power plants and... Participate in the Dragonfly Mercury Project at your national park. Learn more about mercury or dragonflies and share what you know. Learn more about the wildlife in your park, especially wildlife that eats fish and insects. Tell people, family, friends, co-workers, classmates about this project. Get involved with other citizen science projects. There are projects in your park or other national parks. And there are projects you can do at home. Go to the Dragonfly Mercury Project website to find out what we have already learned. If you are working on the Dragonfly Mercury Project, thanks!